Okay, let's talk about different ways that speciation can happen. So what we mean when we say speciation is that you've got a little subgroup within a population that all of a sudden cannot mate with the original population, right? They become genetically isolated from the others, and that's why they become a new species, because according to that definition of a species, that's what it is, right? So there's two ways it can happen, anagenesis and cladogenesis, and this is stuff they found in the fossil record. Once again, this is one I think it's easier if you see a picture. So um, on the left, you've got anagenesis. On the right, you have cladogenesis. So anagenesis, this one here, is going to be where you have an original um, species. That one disappears but gets replaced by a completely different species that evolved from the species. So basically, this completely changed into this species, and the original one is no longer there. Cladogenesis is going to be where you have your original species, and that's still around, but it branches off into a separate species as well, right? So the original one is still around, and then you have its, um, you know, off, not offspring, but it's descendants, right? So um, this on the left is more what they think happened with us, right? We don't really have any Neanderthals or any of the Cro-Magnons hanging around or, you know, any of that kind of stuff hanging around um, because we kind of have replaced them in the fossil record. Um, but, like, if we think about cladogenesis, there's tons of things out there that, you know, the original is still there and it probably evolved into that, right? So that's going to be the difference between those. Now, um, as far as the process or mechanism for speciation, there's two ways that can happen, so how it actually happens. And that's going to be what's called sympatric speciation and allopatric speciation. So going back to our picture, you've got your original population right here, and on the left here we have allopatric speciation, and on the right we have sympatric speciation. So hopefully you can see the difference. In allopatric um, speciation, there is a geographic barrier that has isolated these two, and so just due to that, they're going to become um, distinct from one another and eventually become two separate species. Whereas with sympatric speciation, they're still in the same area, and let's just say this little group maybe starts using this part of the lake a little bit differently from everybody else. They start only hanging out with each other, and eventually they become their own species. But the difference is there's no geographic separation like it is in allopatric. So that's how speciation can happen. And it has to do with um, chromosome number. Um, and I just thought this is kind of interesting to show you that um, there's been a lot of talk about how chromosome um, number works. And so um, hopefully at this point you know that um, humans have 46 chromosomes. Um, and then you've got chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans who have 48. So there's a lot of question about how did that happen? How did we go from 48 to 46? Because according to the fossil record, they were here first and then we evolved from them, right? So um, as far as, you know, the, the ones that evolved first, you've got your very primitive orangutans as far as primates go, um, followed by the gorilla, which is a little bit more advanced. And then you've got your chimpanzee, which is definitely more advanced than that and the most similar to us. And then, of course, at the top, you've got the most advanced things out there, which are the humans, right? But um, how did that happen, right? So um, they started looking at chromosome number two. And what they found is our chromosome number two um, looks a lot like these guys' um, separate chromosomes. And so what they think is that the chromosomes fused over time, and that's how that happened. Um, so remember that when we talk about chromosomes, they have telomeres at the ends, and then they have centromeres in the middle. And so what they think happened is it fused together, and the evidence they have for it is that in our chromosome number two, they have found an inactivated centromere, and they have found telomere sequences in the middle, which is kind of strange, right? They should be just at the ends. So that's just kind of a cool little side note about how they think this kind of stuff happens. Okay, back to our notes. So a couple of things um, that can determine whether these geographic barriers, like an allopatric speciation, can cause speciation to happen. So let's say you've got um, a bunch of individuals, and now there's a huge mountain in between them. So one thing that can determine whether they'll actually become separate species is the mobility of those individuals. If they can get over to the other side of that mountain, no problem, then the chances of them becoming separate species are pretty slim because they'll have gene flow from one to the next. 
Um, another one will be the length of time, right? Um, let's say that there's a river that forms between the populations and now they can't get to one another because it's raging and they can't swim or whatever. Well, if that's a permanent river and that's going to be there for like a thousand years, then chances are pretty good that they're going to become isolated from each other genetically. However, if that's just seasonal and it just keeps them apart for like a year or something, then chances are pretty slim that they're going to become separate species because they just don't have the time, right? Then the last one is that size of that pioneer population. Don't forget that we can have founder effects happen if that um, little population branches off and it doesn't have a good representation of the gene pool. So those are going to be the three factors that can kind of explain whether a species is going to become a separate species or not. Um, another thing that can happen that we should talk about is something called adaptive radiation. And if we go back to the PowerPoint, I've got a great slide to kind of show you that. And this is what they think happened in the Galapagos Islands. Adaptive radiation is where you're going to have one individual or one species evolve into a whole bunch of different species over a very short period of time, right? So think of them all radiating out from one original species. And the reason that something like this could happen over such a short period of time is maybe they moved to these islands and there was really nothing there and so there was lots of ecological niches that they could fill right so all of a sudden they're all getting specialized in their own little stuff because they don't want to compete with one another you've got a whole bunch of different species that can evolve so that's going to be how adaptive radiation is going to work now in the next video we'll talk about um, time frames and how we think this stuff happens over time